Okay, ma'am. We can proceed. Hello, everyone. A warm welcome to all of you for this twenty-one days digital Swadhyay Yoga, presented by PSSM Global and Mahadrasta. I am Sri Lakshmi from UK. Today we have successfully reached day fifteen of the program. Grateful to Patri Ji for gifting us this beautiful, amazing Anapanasati technique. Patri Ji always recommends reading right spiritual books and listening to other masters' experiences along with the meditation. He says that it is the shortest way to attain enlightenment. So, friends, please do listen to all the personal transformations of all the people and read lot of right spiritual books. And I'm so happy to introduce today's speaker, Hitesh and Shubhangi. Hitesh and Shubhangi are seasoned and sought after couple in the field of mind, body, energy connection work. They are trained in they are trained in many different healing modalities like past life regression, inner child work, rebirthing, breath work. family constellation and life between life exploration hitesh is the author of the best seller book sundaram speak conversations to awaken your soul's wisdom he is also an award winning coach per excellence a workshop leader and healer with a decade and half experience in the field of human behavior shubhangi is a powerful intuitive individual and co-presenter with hitesh in workshop focused on alternative healing She also leads session on angelic guidance and sound healing. Driven by her passion for children, she started a school for street children that thrives on the dual pillars of compassion and patience. With more than hundred workshops, they have transformed lives of many people. So we are so happy to welcome Shubhangi and Hitesh. We welcome you. Namaste. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. Um, wonderful introduction and namaste hello everyone namaste and everyone we are thankful to pssm global and uh, swadhyay yogam for giving us this opportunity to be with all of you and uh, you know sharing our uh, you know views on this topic that we've chosen for today and uh, it is really wonderful to know that uh, this yoga has been going for a very long day, uh, a long time and every day somebody is coming and you know is exchanging their views and uh, you all are learning and growing together so that's how the community grows you know each one learns from each other and uh, today is the day 15th for uh, this swadhyay yoga and uh, the topic that we have chosen for ourselves and for all of you is about sutras of self healing because each one of us want to heal ourselves know ourselves more uh, today the intent of our uh, topic will be to help you how that how you can create one how can you create healing for your own self so i will begin with the topic but before that i want shubhangi to start with it yeah namaste once again everyone and thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our wisdom with you all and thank you to swarnlata ma'am to sai to anuradha to all the back end team to shri lakshmi Uh, for organizing this beautiful days every day some masters are coming and they are sharing their wisdom and we are learning so much just sitting at our home and we are learning from everybody that's a beautiful part of it that we are learning from every master and we are hearing the experiences of every people so today's as it is said that today's topic is sutras of self healing so before before we begin to the topic and let me share a joke with you all so this joke is about a lady it talks about uh, it talk it talks about what will happen when you don't listen to your inner doctor and you totally believe on the outer doctor and this lady was suffering from cold and she went to a doctor 
and she asked doctor that i'm suffering from cold please uh, give me some medicine i need to heal this cold and the doctor said okay but we don't have medicine for this cold you need to suffer for like 7 8 days for this but i can help you and she said okay tell me doctor how can you help me he said what you can do is you can go home and take a cold water shower and after taking cold water shower you can stand under the fan naked for 3 4 hours and while hearing this the lady was shocked why the doctor is saying like this she didn't understand and she asked doctor what will happen then why you are saying me to take a shower and stand under the uh, fan she said uh, the doctor said then you will have a pneumonia and she said okay then what will happen if i'll have pneumonia he said because i can cure pneumonia i have the medicine so that's what happened we don't know that our body is carrying such a beautiful power strength inside us the body has all the resources to heal our own self but we believe that doctor is outside and we totally i am not saying that medical therapy is wrong we don't need to take the medicine but we blindly we don't need to just trust only the outside doctors we need to trust our body first whatever the body is saying to you so you can heal your own self and the first before we begin to the sutra what i believe is the most important part to heal yourself is the life urge the life urge is the core thing if you don't have the life urge nothing can heal you nothing can help you from outside or inside the life urge is very important friends and life urge with passion and compassion to towards life every day we need to just wake up we we always sometimes we say oh other one another day you know it's the same day we are suffering again we have to come again we have to sleep do all our work so this is not how we look up to life every day is a new life a new passion comes out from you and the life has so much adventurous you need to learn every day something new something new learn from everybody smile to people a small small things can help you so life urge i feel is the key to to do to do heal uh, towards this journey of self healing if you move towards self healing first step is life urge if you have life urge you can heal anything what matters come to you the illness the chronic illness whatever you can heal all of it so so let's begin now the sutras of self healing and first we can say to our own self that i am ready i have the life urge i want to live a life healthy and then we can move towards the sutras of self healing So Hitesh can wow. share the self-healing sutras. That's wonderful. That's thank you. Thank you for this story. So, uh, friends, let me uh, share with you about my own journey of healing. So, uh, as a child, uh, when I was young, my biggest issue in my, you know, in my, uh, you know, in my, in my environment, environment was that. uh you know we lived in a family which had around 20 people so we all cousins were living together uh my issue was that uh, my the color of my skin is dark you know i looked darker than all of them and they all were very fair then you know people will come at home and they will look at me and they'll say oh he doesn't look to be you know one amongst all of them so he looks like a separate one so he doesn't match to how his mother looks and how his father look so although they used to say it very casually not that they did not love me 
but the child inside me would take it really hard on myself. I would feel that there's something wrong with me. And, you know, I will try to, you know, copy a cousin of mine who was very fair, who would look really handsome. He was a year elder to me. But I failed miserably on everything. And when I was 12 years old, I suffered from chronic asthma. One fine day, I suffered from chronic asthma. I went to the doctor because that day I was not able to breathe. And when my parents took me to the doctor, the doctor, after doing certain tests, he said that your son has got asthma. Although it, it started with bronchitis, but then, you know, it moved into a very chronic stage of asthma. And on the very first day, he gave me an inhaler. Now, I'm sure you all must be knowing what an inhaler is. So there is one end of the inhaler that you have to, you know, uh, put near to your mouth and press that inhaler so that it throws the, uh, you know, the medicine in your, uh, in your uh, respiratory, you know, cavity. And then you are able to breathe much better. So that's how, you know, it started with me. I was at the age of 12 when I constantly took that medicine for myself. And when I reached at the age of 19, it had grown, grown uh, you know, uh, the asthma had grown into something which was really, really chronic. No steroid, no puff, uh, no medicine would work so easily on me. You know, it would always take a lot of struggle for the medicine to show up its effect on me. And along with that, since, you know, these puffs were more of a steroid, so my body became really fragile, you know, after having those puffs, my body will shiver like this, you know, my hand will not be stagnant. It will keep uh, wobbling like this. And at the same time, I would feel really fragile in my body. You know? And uh, so that is how I lived, you know, and uh, the transition time of the season when, you know, from the winters, you go into the summers and from the summers, you come into the winter, the transition period of it would be the most tough time for me during the year. You know, because this transition would make its effect on how am I breathing. So, you know, I would not be able to breathe and I would choke, you know, especially in the nights. You know, so if I would lie down, then, you know, uh, I would, uh, my body will create a lot of mucus and I would need to get up to throw the mucus. So nights and nights, I would never sleep. So such was the state of mind. And then once you have that puff, you are all okay because it was a steroid. You will feel much better about it. But then, you know, in 2007, I was introduced to the practice of meditation by my sister. And that's how I started to meditate. And through that journey, I also started to understand that how my body and mind and the spirit is connected to each other. And when I started to learn about it, I realized that there is a way to change your body uh, than expecting a change or a miracle through medicine. I realized that it's better to pick meditation over medication because that can really help you to heal your body. So I started to heal my mind along with it. I started to heal each and every thought, which was, uh, you know, telling me that I don't love myself because in the childhood, I never tried to be my own self. You know, I always tried to copy others so that, uh, you know, I could change the color of my skin. The color never changed, but I changed from within. And that's how after 10 years, uh, you know, uh, since 10 years from, you know, right now, I mean, I would say the asthma went completely off my life. You know, it has become close to 10 years now. I don't have asthma at all. You know, so I don't even know where is my puff, where is my inhaler and, you know, uh, all those steroids and medicines. It has completely gone off my life. And not only just this, my body has also realized that what is a way to heal your own self? How to self-heal yourself? 
and uh, you know i i feel really strong healthy in my body and uh, at the same time i have realized that there is this wisdom which our body each one of our bodies are carrying if we learn to tune into the wisdom of this body we will be able to heal ourselves better we will be able to understand the illness or disease better right because uh, otherwise what people do generally is if you have a headache pop up a pill if you have a fever pop up a pill and we are living more on popping up these pills you know so there is a better way of doing it so i can also say since 10 years it is almost very 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 rare that i have taken any medicine i would i can just count it on my fingers i would say just once or twice i have had any medicine i mean there was no need wherein not that i hadn't fallen sick because fever is a good sign to the body most of us we feel oh why fever has come up but fever is a sign that there is something your body is trying to process and it will come on its normal phase once you know that processing is over so especially in these times we are very much fearful of fever and we are very much fearful of you know uh, what if if you know the covid happens to me if we work on these seven principles of self healing a lot can heal within all of us right and the uh, very intention for all of and um, for both of us to pick up this topic was this because we want to help you in your journey to sail through the best through this covid times and so what i'm going to do is uh i'm speaking through this journey of my own how i healed my you know myself through these principles so that is what i am going to share with all of you so i will be running a small presentation for you so that uh you know you uh uh are able to you know work along these principles can i request if i can uh be given the sharing uh options please uh can i be made the host of the the meeting please then i'll be able to share i guess and in turn i will make you the co-host sai 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 yeah sai krishna uh, uh, i'll call yeah. someone one second i'm also unable to make you host yeah sai has to make you is doing it now yeah sorry okay yes you are host now hitish yeah just a minute let me now yeah so friends let us begin with these sutras of self healing you know how we can tune into the power of healing our own self so the very first sutra that i want to speak to you all is that human body has an infinite power to heal repair and regenerate so 
our body system might look really complex to us because God has taken a lot of time to create this. And along with that, it has also given the power to this complex system to heal itself. And it would not be wrong to say that uh, it is one of the best pharmaceutical industry which is living within all of us, which means any medicine that you need, it can be created from within, right? Just to give you an example, uh, many a times when people, you know, touch the layers of depression or they are into the burnout zones, you know, they are not able to sleep, they feel insomnia. The doctors give them a chemical called serotonin. So it's called, uh, it's a kind of a tranquilizer which helps you to, you know, calm your senses so that you are able to have a good sleep. Uh, our pineal gland, which is in our skull, right in the middle of the skull, secretes a chemical called melatonin. So that exactly works the same way the serotonin works. So which means instead of having it from outside, we can always create it from within. And meditation does this work. Meditation helps us to release this chemical within ourselves, which we call as melatonin or serotonin. So, which is why I'm saying that our body has the capacity to heal, to repair and to regenerate. Now, there is, you know, a saying in our Upanishads, which says, Yatta Pinde Tatta Brahmande which means so as the cell so is the you know the the collective as within so is the you know the outside force as the microcosm so is the macrocosm i'm sure each one of you must be knowing the story of lord krishna when you know he was playing near you know uh, you know the near uh, the river yamuna and uh, he was eating the mud, you know, the sand he was eating. And his mother looks at him and she sees that he's eating the mud. So she goes to him and he sh she says that throw away the mud. And to take the mud out from his mouth, she opens up his, you know, uh, uh, mouth. And she sees the entire universe living inside of him. Although she got fearful of this, but then it speaks about that how there is an entire world, there is a, a complete world living within each one of us, which means there is a microcosm world which is living inside each one of us. And whatever is, you know, in the outside world, we carry the same inside us. There are around six to seven trillion cells that we carry. And each cell is, in, is a world in its own self, right? It carries the same world within its own self. So such a complex system, yet so much of power which we are carrying within our own, within our own body. Now, each of these cells work through the element that we call as DNA. All of you must be knowing about DNA. And we say that DNAs are coming to us from our ancestors and you know we carry these genes and then we forward it to you know uh, the generations coming below to our own children of course that's what dna does and most of the uh, you know dnas in our uh, scientific terms are considered to be junk dnas around 90 percent of them because we feel that they don't serve any purpose only 10 percent of the dnas human feel are you know needed for this body which can really help us to heal but if we understand the science of dna's you know from a very close uh, space we will understand that dna's also emit an energy called biophoton now this is the photon energy which is outside the universe i mean we say that right now a lot of photon energy from the greater central sun which is the source is coming to the earth. So the same energy is being emitted by our own DNAs. And in our own human language, we can say this biophoton is nothing but the light. 
right? So DNA has the power to emit its own light. And there are many experiments that have been done, you know, to, to see what power these DNAs are carrying and how they can heal their own self. So there is a Russian uh, doctor. His name is Dr. Peter uh, Garyev. So what he did was he did a lot of experimentation around DNAs. So in one of the experiments, he takes a sample of rats and he destroys their, you know, their pancreatic system. So pancreas, we all have pancreas. So he destroys their pancreas. And then what he does is he, he takes a healthy DNA. And from that healthy DNA, he begins to emit light on these destroyed DNAs. And what he begins to notice is that because of the light which is emitting from the healthy DNAs, the destroyed DNAs begin to repair and regenerate. So the reason that I'm trying to, you know, put this experiment across is that light is within. Our DNA carries that light to, you know, to be used on, you know, the the, the parts that we want to repair, the parts that we want to regenerate, and we can, he, you know, achieve that state of proper healing. Most of the times, you know, we feel, oh, if I have this, let's say, a, a certain physical condition, it will be very tough for me to repair it without a medicine. Well, uh, I don't, you know, uh, disrespect the field of allopathy, but it is not that we, we are so regular in allopathy. So we must learn to work on, uh, you know, our own self healing. We must learn to utilize the power of light that is there within each one of us. You know, our system, each and every body part of our body is not more than seven years old, which means every seven year or less than that, each body part gets regenerated apart from you know the the pupil you know because it stays the same throughout our life rest of the body parts they you know they regenerate they the cells die and new cells come up and they achieve the state of healing so the reason that people are not able to heal their illnesses because when the illness portion the part of those cells that are belonging to them, when they die, they give their memory to the new cells. So that is how the illness also continues to pass because cells have a memory. They have their own memory bank. So once the one cell dies, it gives a memory to the other cell. But if we begin to heal the cells through understanding that there is a light within and we begin to believe that, yes, we have the power to heal ourselves, because most of the times we never feel that we can ever heal ourselves. We need an outside support. But this sutra says all power is within. All medicines can only work when we know that we are ready, right? And we believe in this light that works within each one of us. Yeah, I just wanted to add into this that the sutra, the sutra number one, and uh, I think all of us have um, one day or the other day, we have experienced this, how body heals. If I'll give you an example, if we have a cut or bruise in our body, what we do generally, we put some ointment or there's some crack on the skin or maybe sometimes we don't put anything, we just let it be. And some days we see it heal automatically. You know, the cut heal, the bruises heals automatically. And second example is of how body heals, how body regenerates when we have a fracture. So what we have a fracture, like a hand fracture, and we go to the doctor, what doctor does? He does just a plaster on it, just a support to the bone, who, which is cracked. And body heals or regenerate that bone automatically. 
So that shows how body heals, repair and regenerate. And we all have experienced this. If body can regenerate the strong, the solid part, the bone also, the body can heal everything, I would say. So this experience we all had. So we can't deny this. It's a fact. We all have lived through that. We all see that body can heal, repair and regenerate. So it's the practical thing that we have seen in our life. So that's the sutra number one. Wonderful, yes. And we speak about the second sutra, which says love is the highest form of medicine. Uh, most of the times we speak about uh, love. There are different definitions of love. Uh, everybody speaks through their own experience. But if we really want to know love, we must learn it from children. Right? Because children are full of love. Uh, one of the biggest example is that when you see a child, you know, even if that child doesn't belong to you, the child's energy field is so attractive that it calls you up and you are forced to speak to the child or you know, connect with the child from heart to heart. So that's the power of love. The child is naturally emitting the energy of love because he has not made the conditions uh, or the belief systems what adults have made. And another thing that we need to learn from the children if we watch them closely, that they are living in complete uh, you know, a friendship with nature, right? They are living in complete inclusivity. For them, everything is equal. Now, you must see them that they are exploring colors, papers, pen. At the same time, they also explore their excreta. You know, you must have seen children uh, puddling around their own urine. You know, what they do is because they don't have any uh, you know, logic. They don't have any conditioning which tells them that this is good or this is bad. Right? So, right now, they're completely in the space of inclusivity. They live with uh, in a system wherein everything is included, everything is allowed. Right? And another thing that we need to learn from children is their expression. They stay with their expression. They never let their expression uh, suppressed within, a, within their own self. So what they do is if they feel good about anything, you will see them laughing aloud. If they feel really bad about anything, they'll be very open to show their uh, anger or they'll be showing their you know, frustration to the whole thing. So it's like, and the very next moment it will shift. Right? It doesn't mean that they are carrying their anger for two hours, three hours, like what adults do, you know, because if we are angry with something, we take that anger with our own self and, you know, we continue to live through the days with that. But children don't do that. The very first moment, if in a moment they are fighting with you, the very next moment they can come and eat in your plate, right? They're so... They, they let go so easily. They move from movement to movement, moment to moment. And they also know how to express it fully and then unclutch. So, which is what we have not learned. And another thing that we need to learn from children is they accept. They accept everything about their own self equally. Right? And... Uh, but as adults, we don't do that. Children only accept till the point they have started to get those feedings from their parents. Oh, this is good. This is bad. This you should not do. This should never happen. Right? Until then, they are completely in the space of love. So what is love? Love is a process of involvement, dear friends. Love is a process of engaging. So if we truly love ourselves, we must learn the process of engaging with our own self. We must learn the process of caring for our own self. If we don't learn to engage with our own self every day, 
how can we expect others to be engaging with our own self then the coming of illness it's it's going to happen it's it's definitely going to happen because you are not connected to the rhythm of your body you're not connected to what is happening you're not connected to what is your body wanting right so love comes with total engagement involvement get involved with yourself pick up something that makes you happy how many of us continues to you know give and offer something do something for others to make them happy yet we always keep our needs everything at bay not that i don't uh, i say that you don't make others happy of course you can make others happy but that can only happen when you have recharged your own battery when you have learned to engage with your own self if you haven't learned to engage with your own self you cannot expect your body to constantly get engaged with others so love means learning to passionately get engaged with your body with your mind with your emotions and with your spirit right learning to know that what is it that can make me happy most of the times in our journey what we've seen when we work with people in healing sessions through one on one we ask them to pick up an activity which can really make them happy right if they are going through some illness uh we ask them to pick them pick up something which can really help them to express their own self be it singing be it you know painting gardening cooking anything wherein they can get fully engaged with life right and the engagement with life is very important dear friends if we don't know how to get engaged with life the creation can never happen we can never create the health that we want to create so in those people we have seen that there is a great shift in their first in their view of their illness the way they look at their illness also begins to loosen up they begin uh, they begin to feel that yes uh, you know health is not about just healthy body health is more about the state of happiness right even who you know has changed the definition of uh the word health it's no more just about body it's more about the state the state of happiness right so that's what uh, love is about right there is this beautiful saying by michael nemi and from the book of mirdad you know such an amazing book he's written and he says even your body is perishable as they seem could certainly resist degeneration did you but love each cell of them with equal zeal most of the times what happens is we begin to judge the body we begin to judge the illness but dear friends our way to healing begins when we stop to judge illness you know most of the times we are fearful of let's say cancer we are fearful of tumors we are fearful of some other chronic illness sugar diabetes and uh, we keep judging these illnesses and we curse these illnesses oh why you have come to me why me right you can never heal if you keep criticizing cribbing about your illness love is the way you must learn to love the illness right you must learn to see it with love right it's equal to you know for example if a child is angry and you crib the child and you're making the child even more angry that's what you're doing with disease or illness the child needs your attention so give the child the attention that it deserves the moment you begin to pour your love on the child the child will stop to cry that's what we need for healing our illness also right no war no you know nothing in the world can be won by fighting fighting is not the solution facing it with love is the solution dear friends we have to learn to face it with love 
right? When we face it fully, fearlessly, with love, you will see that what you are trying to face will will automatically, you know, begin to lose its power. It will it will shape shift into something really magical. You know, I remember, uh, you know, uh, a friend of mine uh, who had cancer. You know, and uh, so the moment he was told about this, that he had, he has cancer, he began to feel really, really fearful, right? And one fine day, the, he went to the doctor, and doctor really told him, "Look, look, you have gone to the, the, you know, the other stage, which is, you know, a stage three, and it is more aggressive in nature." And immediately, he began to feel that he is going to die. Right? Because the biggest fear is, oh, I'm going to die. I will not be no more I, anymore. And you know what he did was he went to home. He just prayed to God that if if death is what I have chosen for myself, I'm ready to die. And that's what he said. And the moment he said that, he went to sleep. And after that sleep, when he woke up, there was a certain amount of lightness that he felt in his body. You know, there was this urge to live that awakened from within. And it was that urge which made him to cure his cancer completely, dear friends. You know, rather than going a downward slope, from that very moment, he began to make an upward slope. How did that happen? By learning to accept what is happening accepting that it is happening and I'm ready to go through it. And that is the way of love also. Love means accepting what is. So accept. Don't get, uh, you know, uh, don't waste too much of your energy into thinking, oh, why this is happening to me? Why this problem? Why, why me? The answers will only come when you stop to crib, when you stop to criticize. So spend time in accepting it, accepting that it has come for a reason. Illness is a teacher and I'm going to learn from it. And when you do that, there is certain amount of insights that are going to come to you because if you meditate, your body will speak to you. Most of the times what happens is insights come to everybody. Wisdom comes to everybody. But the biggest problem that we do is we never act on the wisdom. We never take an action on the wisdom. And that is the reason that we don't heal. If you begin to act on the wisdom that says, hey, look, I need to make certain changes in my food, let's say. Or, hey, I need to meditate more. Or, hey, I should stop craving about something. Or maybe I should take more responsibility of myself. Or hey, I should be more happy. You know, work on that. Act on the wisdom that comes from within. Because if you act, only then your body will begin to experience the change. And then, loving doesn't mean that you give the love once and it's over. Love every day. Make a choice to love every day, dear friend. So it doesn't mean that you just love your illness only once. No, you love it every day. So if I were to show you, how am I going to do it? So feel that there is a pillow with me and feel that this is your illness. This pillow is nothing but your illness. Hug this pillow. Give it a big warm hug and say I see you you know let go of all your guards to move away from it oh it should not come close to me allow welcome it welcome the illness illness with love and then see what happens dear friends right you will begin to heal it and there are many stories you know I don't need to talk about what happened to Anita Murjani through dying to be me Right? What uh, Eric Bernie has written about in his book, right? He's, he's spoken about so many healing cases wherein people have healed, healed themselves uh, 
you know through their own faith through their own power of love okay the third sutra says healing happens when you work in alignment to the wisdom of your body right uh, our body is a very wise system dear friends right uh, many a times we reject the body right we feel there is nothing in the body but taking care of the body is as important as taking care of your soul right body is like a temple if there is no temple there can be no idol there can be no god within them so take care of this temple you know every day we go out uh, you know we uh, what we do is we take bath we feed the body with food you must see that all these activities are these in alignment with your body right are we listening to the wisdom of your body and it's not that only meditators body speak to them no everybody's body is speaking to them one such example is when your tummy is full right you still want to have some more food on your plate but your 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 body tells no more it gives you a burp it tells you it gives you a hint i am over i don't have any place in my stomach now so please stop eating but what we do is we let go of it we continue to fill our stomach you are you are ignoring the sign of the body and you are continuing to eat what you are doing is you are obviously moving towards the illness you are moving towards the digestion issues you are moving towards some issues with your your uh, your intestine you know uh, constipation all these things are going to come you are just filling your body with food right so we must learn to trust the wisdom of the body and when i say wisdom of the body body knows only to live naturally right anything which is not in connection to nature body it is not good for body right so for example these days let's say a lot of uh, products that are coming in market these are products okay these are not food right and when i say these products like uh, ready made rotis and ready made dal and uh, you know everything which is processed and refined oils it is far 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 away from the nature it is not the nature right because they've gone through a lot of processing it cannot be really good for our body let's say excess of sugar which is washed in that sulfur chemical you know to make it white right and uh, even non veg right it is it is completely what we should eat is something which is full of energy that is why we are more dependent on uh you know like plants and vegetables which are more alive but when you eat the dead what do you get you don't get energy you are actually becoming that graveyard wherein the dead can be stored right so these automatically these this is leading you to uh welcome disease or illness right and another thing which we don't know is to give rest to body right we eat in the morning we eat in the uh, you know as as a kind of a brunch and then we have lunch we have supper we have some snacks and then we have dinner and then we also munch something in the midnight we eat and we eat and we eat and we continue to eat if you are going to continue to eat your body is constantly working then think of a car which is constantly running can that run for a long time it can never run so you need to give rest to the body that is why our ancestors followed the culture of fasting dear friends right we feel fast is about remembering god no fast is about taking care of this god right fast is about honoring your body fast is about allowing your body to rest you know because if your body is constantly churning food it will not create the energy for healing 
right? You need to keep your body free, free from any work so that it can create healing, right? If you are keeping it busy, it will never create healing from within wherein it can regenerate tissues and, you know, uh, the DNS can emit light. Consider an example that uh, you are at home, there is some important work that you have to do and all of a sudden a bell rings and a guest comes. Then what do you do? You are just busy with the guest, right? You forget about the work. That's what exactly your body is doing. Your body thinks, oh, today I'm going to heal. But immediately the bell rings and you put up some more food in the body. Then it's an uninvited guest. The body is busy now. Your system is busy now to churn the food. When will it create, regenerate your tissues? It will never get the time. So which is why giving a rest to the body is very important, dear friends. You must learn to fast, right? There, uh, you know, uh, recently there is somebody who has been given, uh, I don't remember the name of that scientist, but he has been given the Nobel Prize for the intermittent fasting system. I'm sure many of you must have heard of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting means that in the in the in the hour in a day which has 24 hours, some two third of the day or one half of the day, based on what you want to you know uh, do, what two third of the day you keep a fast. You maintain a fast. You don't eat anything. Because when you don't eat anything, what happens is your body produces a, a reaction called ketosis. What is ketosis? Ketosis is a process of your uh, body eating its own fat. Right? Many people, they shed a lot of money to you know, uh, get uh, thin, you know, to lose weight. Losing weight is the easiest thing, dear friend if you know the power of fasting, right? You can always stay at the same weight if you know how to fast, right? And how do you do it? By not eating, let's say, in the first two, two third, and then, uh, then eating in the rest of the time, you know? Although intermittent fasting is a complete different topic, but yes, what I want to encourage you is Keep a fast for a day in a week or at least 15 days. Give your body rest so that it can, uh, you know, uh, heal itself. At the same time, learn to pick up the messages from the body. Before you put the food in your, mind, uh, in your mouth, you must ask. You must ask yourself. And how do you ask? Am I feeling that I want to eat this, right? Do I feel good about this food in my mind? Check that. If you don't feel good about that food in your mind, I request that you don't eat, right? Because your body and mind are connected. The signals are connected. You can always pick that signal, right? So check it with, you know, what all you eat. Let's say uh, anything, I mean, uh, right, starting from heavy oily food or whatever you eat, right? that's what you can always check. Pick up the wisdom of your body. And yeah, so if you, if you begin to pick that up, you will realize that a lot of healing is happening naturally in your body, dear friends. Right? A lot is getting uh, cleared. The tumor is tumor cells are there in everybody's body, right? It's there in everybody's body. But for many of them, it becomes malignant and some of them, it is really benign. Why? Because uh, they, their body has the power to regenerate something new. For some, it is malignant because your body is constantly busy with something else. It is not able to create that heal. So the moment you put a fast, what happens is, your cancer cells also eat their own cell. They begin to eat their own cell and they die. They die the death of hunger, right? 
And the next one is body constantly serves the mind. Right? There was a time when we said that in a healthy body lives a healthy mind. I would say in a with a healthy mind, you have a healthy body. Right? So before you heal your body of fever, you must heal your mind of fever. So for example, if you have a fever in the body and you swallow a pill, what happens is you might heal that for some time. But if you still have a belief, oh, I feel this fever is going to come back. Trust me, after two, three days, the fever will come back. Right? So mind has to be worked upon when you are healing your illness, dear friends. You continue to heal the illness at a body level by popping up pills, uh, these pills. It will not happen fully. fully. It, it will continue to come back if you haven't healed the fear of it from your mind. Right? So which is why mind is to be healed completely. And that is why these are the days most of the people, there is a great awareness that is spreading about the mental health. Body, physical health, we all speak. We have doctors wherein you go and you... But mental health is an arena wherein people haven't spoken much about it. We feel, oh, mental health is for somebody who are mental, who have a mental disorder. No, dear friends. We all need mental health. We all need to work on our mind wiring and rewiring. We all need to check our thoughts, our beliefs, our perceptions, right? Because it is the energy of the mind that creates the matter in the body. If you don't heal the mind, you will not be able to heal the body. And that's very much visible, right? Uh, the reason people are unsuccessful with you know, years and years of medicine that they have had for, you know, let's say uh, uh, the diabetes and they are constantly having it because they haven't healed the diabetes from the mind. Because they feel it will never reverse. They feel that they are believing it here in their mind. Right? And when you begin to believe, you cannot recuperate. If you wish to recuperate, you wish to believe that you can recuperate. You wish to believe that you can heal it fully without any unnatural or synthetic intervention. You can heal that. There is this woman whose name is Braden Bayes. And she's written an amazing book called The Journey. So one fine day, she went to the doctor and through a scan of her you know, lower abdomen, a uterus area, she found out that she carries a football-sized tumor in it. So, dear friends, football-sized tumor. So, she took two months of break before going through the surgery and she healed it fully. And how did she heal? In that healing, she had to heal her mind and emotions first. Because mind have an energy, so it has a direct impact on your emotions also. Emotion, emotion, which means energy in motion, right? All the emotions that are suppressed within, they begin to create illness in the body. So everything that is not being expressed, it becomes suppressed within the body. So for example, cancer is a long standing resentment, right? When people come to us and we work with them, you know, let's say for their illnesses, uh, or for any other thing, we always tell them that your physical illness has a tail of an emotion. There is an emotion which is suppressed within you. Uh, so for example, people, those who have uh, kidney issues, right? they are struggling with their kidney stones. It is quite likely that they are fearful of something. They carry fear and fear which is long-standing in nature. People who have arthritis issues, it speaks about their inability to adapt to the change, right? And that is why they have 
uh, you know, missed on the oiling of their, you know, the grease of their knees. It has, it has gotten over. And people who have respiratory issues, it is about grief and self-love, right? And same goes with uh, anger. People who have anger, it's about their liver, right? Anger affects their liver. And uh, people who have constipation issues, it is about unable to let go. Unable to let go of their own approach. They are too rigid with their own way of life. Right? So everything, every emotion speaks about certain illness, dear friends. Right? And which is where the intervention of body, mind and emotion comes into the picture. So, before we heal illness, we must tap into the thought that is leading to that illness, right? The belief that is leading us to the illness. So, heal the belief first. So, for example, the belief could be, I should be punished. Most of the people, when they get an illness, they feel, oh, it is a law of karma. I am being punished. Of course, it's a law of karma, but you don't have to feel that it is a punishment for you. You can live it gracefully. As I said in the Sutra 2, wherein you begin to love, love what has come to you. When you love it, you will shift that punishment into something which is magnificent. It will leave you immensely powerful, dear friends. It will be a doorway for you to tap into certain great gifts of your life, right? So, body has to be healed through mind, okay? And the next one that says, all healing works through faith. All healing works with faith. You know, uh, I remember when, uh, you know, as children, my mother to uh, took me to a homeopathy doctor. He would give us those small, small pills, right? And we would enjoy, you know, swallowing those small, small pills. Uh, you know, there is something called placebo. I'm sure you, many of you must be knowing. Placebo means that you are given a medicine, but it's actually not a medicine, right? But yet you heal. Many of the medicines that your doctor give you, that's actually a placebo, right? So it's not that the medicine is healing you, it's your faith which is healing you, dear friends, right? Most of the times what happens is when a doctor say to us, oh, you will get happy, uh, you'll be fine, you'll be absolutely fine, we build our faith on it and that's how we heal, right? But if doctor says something, oh, you cannot heal, it's, it's, it can never be reversed, you have to take medicine throughout life, we immediately feel our faith has gone down. We give up. If we wish to heal, we must develop faith first, dear friends. And faith in the wisdom of your body. The faith that my body can heal itself. That is the first and the foremost thing that we have to do. Then your body becomes that vehicle which can create healing for you. Uh, I would invite you to see uh, a video on YouTube. Uh, I can tell you about that, uh, you know, the topic of it, wherein a cancer gets healed in two minutes. A cancer gets healed in two minutes, you know, so they are showing that ultrasound wherein uh, the tumor is there and they are passing on the energy, the full energy is being given. Within two minutes, the cancer dissipates, the tumor finishes and it is fully in that, you know, in that video. So I will invite you just type in YouTube when you, uh, you know, you're free, just type in cancer healing in two minutes. Right? So what is it? It is faith healing, dear friends. Energy healing is nothing but faith in the energy, that energy can heal us. 
and that's what is leading you to to heal everything okay so whatever you pick up pick it up with faith if you pick it half wicked it would not get you to space of healing remember half wicked food nobody likes so eat it when it is fully baked how do you bake it with faith pick up anything with faith you are doing energy medicine you are doing alternating work put your faith put your full energy in that that your body can heal it fully the next sutra says the deepest healing known to the mankind is healing your inner child wounds now what is inner child you know as i spoke to you about that how child are full of love they don't know you know all the things all the conditionings that an adult is carrying so each one of us were born like god you know we were god like you know we carried the energy of the god we were nothing but the god itself okay but as we grew through those developmental stages there were many beliefs those were passed on to us initially we were playful and then these constant nudging by parents and societal pressure we were told don't be too you know too open uh, you know don't express yourself so much don't laugh out loud you know uh, don't jump right and uh, study well only study can save you if you don't study you will not be able to earn good name for yourself you know you'll sit outside the temple and beg for yourself you know all these things and apart from that when we were told oh you are not good for this oh look at the way you look you know you are too dark you are too stout you know look at your eyes and look at the way you talk look at the way you walk you know and then there are constant failures that we've gone through we are told you cannot do it you will never be able to do it you know you you are such a pathetic one right all these things and all those cuss words and abuses that we've been given most of the times our life as an adult if we've been feeling can i do it will i be able to do it know that this doubt is always being put up put into us when we were children we were told you cannot do it right we our trust was broken right and now this doesn't mean that we begin to crib about people who led us to that they did it because their own inner child is being wounded right but then we must take the charge now to heal our inner child wounds science says the first 7 years of our life are the stepping stone to the life that we are living right now so what beliefs we made in the first 7 years they are going to go with us throughout our life until you choose to heal the wounds right so for example if as an adult you feel gadha you feel an idiot know that it is several times in an in the childhood you've been told you idiot you fool gade kahin ke all these things that you've been told and as children you do nothing but you absorb you absorb it like a sponge so be careful what you speak to your children also dear friends because your words are they are absorbing it you don't know how it is going to impact their future they can completely give away their light just with the word that you've spoken to them or they can completely embrace the light with that word so choose a word which is empowering in nature okay so we must take charge of healing our inner child wounds dear friends okay and if we heal the child within since the adult is made from that child we will heal the adult also Okay, the add the present self that we are, we will heal that as well. And how do we heal ourselves? By learning to 
stop judging us judging ourselves because enough of judging has has happened in the childhood right we've been judged a lot we've judged ourselves and we still judge ourselves stop to judge tell yourself that i love myself i accept myself it's okay to be me right i am unique in my own ways right i am a unique expression right you are not here to live like others you are here to live your own unique expression so it's okay to be different when you acknowledge your own uniqueness you will see the world begins to appreciate it but you must first appreciate it you must first accept it only then the healing can happen so healing our inner child happens the very first step is to learn to stop judging us accept accept what is there it's okay to be me and the last one which says disease in itself has no reality dear friends so disease doesn't come under the preview of this question which we call as who am i who am i i am energy i am consciousness i am wisdom i am the amalgamation of these three things so disease doesn't come under the preview of this disease is not a reality you might have chosen it to learn something disease is a teacher it is there to teach you something you can always learn from this before you pop up a pill for your migraine sit with this migraine try to understand what this migraine is trying to teach you what is it trying to tell you it's a feedback system it is giving you a feedback about your own self that there is something that you need to shift within and when you try to act upon that feedback act upon that wisdom you will see the disease is dissolving on its own right you are reaching to who am i and what is that who am i energy consciousness and wisdom energy means we are energy beings we carry the energy the 7 trillion cells are nothing but they carry the energy even this experiment of god particle it says that most of our universe more than 95% of our universe is nothing but energy right only 3 or 4% is matter okay so energy has an impact on the matter if you shift the energy within the body will the matter will change naturally okay so we are energy beings and what is consciousness consciousness is our act of looking our awareness with which we look at something you know this whole combo of lotus and mud right we look at lotus beautifully but we don't look at mud in a beautiful way we feel what rubbish but if we begin to change our way to look at this mud everything will change because it is because of mud lotus is lotus it is the mud that is nourishing the lotus so if there is no mud there can be no lotus so that's a way we changed our looking to this mud same way we must change our way to look at things in life right most of the times as i said change your way to look at your disease look at it with love obviously when you look at it with your love your consciousness is shifting right and that's how we are consciousness beings which means our act of life act of seeing matters a lot we must look in a beautiful way you know this term wherein george bernard shaw says beauty lies in the eyes of beholder 
Beauty is nowhere. Beauty is in your eyes. Beauty is in your act of seeing, dear friends. That's where the consciousness is. And then the wisdom, the third concept. We are wise beings. How are we wise beings? When we learn to apply energy and consciousness in our life. That is the application and that is what the wisdom is. The application of energy and consciousness awakens the wisdom, is wisdom actually. So disease in itself is not a reality. Whenever a disease comes, if we begin to feel, oh, I am an energy being, if this is the energy, lack of energy that has created the disease, I can always awaken more energy through meditation. I can, you know, uh, vibrate at a higher frequency and I can heal that. And second thing is we change our act of looking, that, looking at that illness. We change our act of looking at everything, be it anger, be it shame, be it guilt, be it people, be it stupid people, sad people, bad people. We look to their beauty. We look to something magical, something unique that they are carrying. We look to something beautiful in the tough times of our life, tough situations of our life. That is what we are beginning to use the consciousness. And ultimately, when we are living from the space of energy and consciousness, we become the wise being that we are. So I think uh, that's what I had to share about these seven principles. Now, what we are going to do is uh, Shubangi is going to take us through a meditation and let us sit comfortably and enjoy the meditation with Shubangi. So we all can sit comfortably. I'll play some music for you all. And gently, you can close your eyes. And take three long deep breaths, inhaling from your nose and exhaling from your mouth. One more time, inhaling from your nose. And exhaling from your mouth. One last time. Inhaling. And exhaling. Now come back to your normal, natural, rhythm of your breath. How the breath comes in and how the breath goes out. completely become aware of your breathing. Mm -hmm. 
nowhere to run, nowhere to go. Just be, be with your breath. And at this moment, telling to yourself that I am ready to heal myself. I'm ready to be healthy. I am ready. I am ready. Now at this moment, visualize yourself that you are in a beautiful garden. This garden has everything that you like. This garden has rich grass, colorful flowers, completely experience the same. Use all your sensory perceptions. You can see the grass, the trees, the flowers. You can hear the sounds of birds, the sound of wind. You can feel the grass. It's a beautiful garden. And in this garden, you can sit or lie down. and feel the grass, the green grass under you. Feel the freshness of this garden. This freshness can make you calmer and more relaxed. Now imagine a light pouring out 
from the sky, from the sun. And this light has a healing ability. And this light starts to enter into your body through your feet. Allow, allow this light to enter into your body, through your feet. This light is entering into your feet. And if there is any tension, this light dissolves it, drains all the tension. This light is moving into each and every cell, each and every part of your body. This light slowly moves upward. towards your lower legs. This light penetrating in each fiber, each item. Your legs are becoming relaxed and calm. Maybe you can feel any sensation like tingling sensations in your legs. You can feel the warmth, the light in your legs. This light further moves up to your thighs. Dissolving all pain and stress. And slowly, slowly, this light further moves to your pelvic region. The 
This light drains away all the tension. And this light is spreading out. In every part, in every cell, the soft, powerful light This light reaches to your stomach, your abdomen. And releasing all the stress, all the tensions. light is illuminating in every fiber healing every fiber and cell of your body <coughs> the soothing light healing light moving deeper and deeper into your being. This light further moves to your chest area. Releasing all the pain, stress, tensions. Cleansing all the parts of your chest area. Bringing light, relaxation, and healing. Now this light moves to your arms, moves to the tip of your fingers, this light helps you to remove all the stiffness, all the tension that you are carrying in this part. And 
The light is flowing effortlessly. And moves up to your neck. Now this light moves further to your head, covering all your face, your head. releasing all the stress and tensions from your head. You are completely enveloped into this light as a cocoon. Your body is covered with this beautiful healing light. It is radiating from your body. From head down to your toes, your whole body is covered with this healing light. Now is the time to concentrate this light on any specific area of your body where you feel that part needs this healing light. Imagine this light as a torch beam. Shining on one part of you. How are you feeling? In that part where you are sending this healing light. Whatever you are experiencing, let it be.
any vibration, any sensation. any feeling at this moment. Rest, rest in this light. can receive any message, any guidance that your body wants to tell you. Just receive it. Trust. Trust your body. Sending all the positive energy to this part. Sending all the love. Accepting this part as it is. in all the love, happiness, peace, joy and health. Breathe into this positive affirmations. With your breath, 
you can anchor these affirmations into your being. I am love. I am whole. I am energized. Breathe into these affirmations. I am vibrant. All the cells of my body is in the perfection of the divine being. My body is a safe place to be. I have all the energy to accomplish my goals and to fulfill my dreams. Health is my natural birthright. I am healthy. I am healthy. This moment you can take a long deep breath. And telling to yourself this light always resides in me, within me. I trust the wisdom of my body. This light is always there for me whenever I need guidance.
and slowly, slowly, we can start to return back, return back to the room where we are sitting. Thanking this beautiful healing light. Thank you to our body, which is working 24 by 7. Thank you to each and every part and cell of our body. slowly, slowly returning back from this beautiful garden. Coming back to the room where we are sitting. And whenever you are ready, you can slowly open your palms and keep your palms on your eyes for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Whenever you are ready, you can open your eyes with a smile. Feeling rejuvenated, whole, complete, healthy. Welcome back, dear friends. And if you want to share your experience, maybe you can write your experience in the comment box. If you have any question, we will write back to you or maybe read your comments, whatever you have experienced in this meditation, any message that you receive, any guidance that you receive from your body and how are you feeling right now if you want to comment on that. Thank you once again. Sir, uh, Suresh sir want to share his experience. So we, we sure. Yes, yeah. sure. <clears throat> Uh, Nitesh ji, today is a very nice session, knowledgeable session. Uh, it aptly suits our uh, digital jhana, swajhaya yoga. Uh, how our body has uh, enormous power of healing and uh, regeneration and how to love we can uh, cure our diseases, how to um, cure our childhood wounds and uh, how through wisdom of our mind, uh, we can give you the, all our diseases. It's a wonderful session from uh, ill health to health. It's a um, good concept of this, uh, seven principles. Uh, once and uh, through meditation, Shivangi Madam, uh, it's a wonderful session. How we got this healing uh, light and how we cured uh, each and every cell of our body. Uh, it's a, a really a wonderful session. Uh, now everybody has to believe his own body power and mind power that it used, that what you told him, the cancer also was cured in two minutes. You, YouTube the reference you gave, uh, it's a, definitely an eye-opener for all the humanity. Uh, it's a really a great session today. Once again, thanks to Viteji and Subhangi Madam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us here and our gratitude to the entire team for uh, bringing us together. Thank you, Sai. Thank you, the Maharashtra team. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Whatever.
श्री लक्ष्मी मैम वेरी सी Madam, your voice is not audible. No, no, not audible. No, so, I'm just. Sir, sir, or you can conclude this session. Yes. Yeah. Let me, madam. Voice, you can conclude. Conclusion, not which spiritual yeah. India magazine, so that I can. Yeah. Uh... Uh, it is a uh, one great uh, address to all of the viewers. As usual, we are uh, addressing on the Swadhyaya part. We have a good English magazine which gives enlightenment. It uh, each word was uh, being uh, uh, edited by our uh, great Guru Brahma Shrita Mahapatriji. It, uh, it gives the concepts of all great masters. Uh, those who read this uh, spiritual India and spiritual science magazine. It is assured that one can get an enlightenment uh, very fast, and uh, that's what our uh, Guruji tells. Through Nana, we get knowledge. Through knowledge, we get moksha. That uh, principle, that logic, definitely it helps. And it gives uh, proof through these uh, two magazines. Uh, let us watch a one-minute uh, ad so that uh, we can uh, get uh, get hold of uh, this uh, what this uh, bi-monthly magazine is. Add this. Once again, uh, Hitesh ji and uh, Sumangi madam, it's uh, really we have to congratulate you both for uh, having given us a wonderful knowledge. And definitely, it uh, it is uh, written in with the golden letters in the history of this uh, 21 days Swadhyaya Yoga. Uh, okay, Sai. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. As you told, this mental health is uh, a basic health for uh, physical health. Everybody has to follow that. Uh, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>